Yeah, yeah. Yes. Good. You heard it? You said yes. He did. Well, I'll see if I can make it. Give, give yeah, going. Going. Yeah, All right. yeah, and I'll be very hope. Hope. I hope I'm there. Oh. To view it and see it and hear it. What topic are you going to give a talk on? The Gorgias. Ooh, soon. Mm -hmm. That's like uh, next Friday. Really? Good. I'm scared. Mm. I have a, a fine piece of jewelry for you here. They're not very popular. Some fancy decoration. <laughs> High cliff. That's when we're getting like we try to file a lawsuit against a lot of the popular phones in China. Mm. Oh. 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 That's the only one you need. That's it. Rhetoric. Oh, Everything else runs off that. What a subject. Hmm. Oh, that made the power of it is immense. Mm -hmm. Offhand, did you say something about this curious problem of rhetoric? Um, I haven't given the talk yet. Oh, right, that's oh, why. We were letting you warm up. <laughs> it was kind of like the rough draft. Yes. Well, the rhetoric in the Gorgias is um, the lower end mm -hmm. compared with the Phaedrus. Right? If, if rhetoric could be... if. Rhetoric could be a noble art to justify that kappa ending, mm. kappa eta. Then uh, you're not going to find that in the Gorgias. You're not going to find that rhetoric in the Gorgias. Ah, so you're talking about rhetorique? Rhetorique? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Denoting skill yeah, and all those yep. things you know. Understood, yep. I wasn't sure if everybody did. But if you, in, go ahead, discourse. No, no, you do. You, I want to hear you say it. I'd like to learn your points. <laughs> oh, the, the Greeks will let you use a word like, um, yeah. what's a good one? Politike. Politike, or rhetorike in this case, or whatever the form is. And the A to end in the A, rhetorike, that, can, that, that's, that is understood to be a modifier of the word techne. So the complete phrase, which means art. So the complete phrase mm -hmm. would be, hey, techne. Hey, rhetorike, techne, or hey, techne, rhetorike. But because the Greeks know that and use that, they let the techne drop, and they let just the eta ending and the feminizing of the artic of the adjective form the rhetorical art, myutic art, myuticos, myutike, right? So, because adjectives usually have three endings, masculine, feminine, neuter, they let the feminine article, feminine form of an adjective with the Article serve for the, na the the art thereof, the art thereby. Isn't it? It's also the kappa. It's ca the kappa. It actually eta. might be ike. I don't know what you're talking about exactly, but ikos means capacity to do something and becomes yeah. ike. Right? That's that's the point I was waiting for you to talk about. Is the well, capacity both, to though, do something? Well, they're both different. It's not always. It's just the eta ending in itself will give you technique. The ikos ikos ike is a whole different thing. Although <clears throat> they can go well together. <clears throat> Yeah, I'd like to look at that That's one. That's where you get sostike. Like, how about musike? Same thing, kappa eta, right? Or no, because the stem is musik, I think. Well, I'd have to know, I don't know that one for sure, though. Enjoy. Do that. What's, what's your interest in the Gorgias? My interest in it. Wait, wait, he hasn't answered the other question about rhetoric. Oh, okay. Maybe they'll go together. Um. What's my interest in the Gorgias? Have you read the Gorgias? Um, well, it features Socrates dialoguing with three sophists. So the and, and then it has. I mean, that in and of itself is very interesting. I don't know. I, I I tend to be interested in politics generally, right? And these are very political figures, the people that Socrates is dialoguing with, and that goes into the to the bargain is. Uh, Who's a real, poli who's a true politician? 
like what does that amount to and so the dialogue explores the relationship of rhetoric with politics and also doing politics in a real way one of Socrates' conclusions in that work is that he's the only true politician that is that tries to make his people better tries to improve the condition of his people whereas uh, um, someone who practices the conventional rhetoric is actually functioning to harm their soul uh, and it's nice to see how those themes are played out in the, in the, in the architecture of that work I think you'd be more interested in it if you read it yourself too. Did, could you define rhetoric? Hold on. Watch it when it passes you the question you're supposed to be answering. Okay, uh, just, that, that just a question? little caution, you know, here. I'll let him get away with it because it's an interesting, oh, okay. interesting question. Well, it's like, whatever your answer to that might be, that's part of what that work is concerned with doing, is that, defining it <clears throat> as precisely as possible. And then what? In a lower sense, though. Like, if someone's practicing rhetoric in a lower way, what are they doing? Selling your car. What do you mean in a lower way? Selling car. your soul. Selling your soul, yeah. If you get into the Gorgias, you want Is there a that. distinction between a higher and a lower rhetoric? Yeah, I was making that point earlier that if you want to get the higher rhetoric, you got to get into Plato's Phaedrus rather than the Gorgias. Yeah, the, the art of speaking in the Phaedrus where you can make a speech to match each kind of soul is also referred to as rhetoric. Yeah, it's, it's called rhetoric. Hmm. This is your dream? But Pierre was saying that the Gorgias needs to be, or the Gorgias and the Protagoras go together. And you're not or really should advancing with, your own position at should all? should be read side by side. Uh, I'd like to hear what his position is, or what he means. Hmm. So no, not yet. I mean, aside from the, you know, surface, Protagoras was a famous sophist, so was Gorgias. Isn't the idea too, isn't the problem that those people who can persuade you don't, maybe you mentioned this, I was busy for a while, don't have any knowledge of the good, and therefore they can't possibly tell whether they're directing you to a good goal or a not so good goal? I, I don't know if it's specific to the Red to the Gorgias, mm. I just thought it was specific to the problem of persuasion. Might be the Gorgias of the protagonists. They don't know what's good, though. They, right. Anything they persuade you of is going to be just by chance. By chance, yeah, and towards their ends or towards someone's ends. But never know what's good. But never, hmm, by chance. Well, yeah. uh, unless it's by chance. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I know the good comes up in there, but um, definitely. It's a major feature in that one, too. Uh, but they have problems. Gorgias himself has problems. He's the master rhetorician. He has problems defining it right, right from the beginning of the work. And he even goes so far as to say, hey, you know, if a doctor gets up and is going to convince a patient to take on his program of medical treatment, a rhetorician standing side by side with the doctor would trump the doctor's knowledge because his power of persuasion is so superior to anybody who's got a particular art, you would be turning yourself over to the rhetorician to perform the medical treatment rather than the doctor. Because he's so convincing. Yeah. But it doesn't. <laughs> but what he does doesn't benefit you in any way. He doesn't have medical knowledge. So. I think that's connected with the idea of the good. Right? Like, the doctor would have the knowledge of the good for this patient, but not the relationship. Or the knowledge of what benefits. Yeah, what well, benefits. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a 
couches loom large in your dreams. Have you noticed that? The what? Couches. I'm just joking. <laughs> Is there a couch in this one? Yes. First paragraph. Oh, yeah. Well, that plays in with male practice as well. Couches? No. Male practice. Because he, the, um, whatever the rhetorician's knowledge is, he's using it for his own benefit. Rather than for. Well, he doesn't even have a patient. Yeah, Gorgias doesn't really treat him on that level. He's just saying, hey, look, this is how powerful his art is, is that he can be more convincing to you than the guy who has the knowledge. Whether or not he uses it for his own benefit, this is this is what rhetoric does. <clears throat> does he use the word art? It's not actually yeah. art. It doesn't benefit. That's one of the major issues in that work. Yes, yes he does. <clears throat> if memory serves. Warm in. <laughs> Out and in. So what do you make of this dream? Well, can we have him do a reading? Can we have him do a reading of it, Pierre? Can we have Eldar do a reading of this? So think, be, do you think that would be a good idea? Yeah, because it will be easier for me to focus on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, why do you think we should look at it? Oh, uh, because dreams are providential. Hmm. And it's so long, so it's got to have yeah, a good Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. What's the, what kind of issue do you think is here? Oh, no. What kind of issue do I think is here? Something that Eldar is not seeing about his daily life. But it's taking a, an interesting form or term. Yeah. yeah. What if that's an example of rhetoric? Whatever problems in this dream? Yeah. Uh, if so, how would you spot it? Um, there'd have to be some logos that results in a decision. Mm -hmm. And on, on what level of logos would it be? A path if, logos. Pa oh. <laughs> All the way down there. Yeah. Ah. How about the antigods? Yeah, that too. Mm. Could be a combination. Mm. Mm. Where's the problem, Julie? Mm. Where's the problem? Well, every paragraph has like two people. There's him and then like somebody else. And it seems like there's this recurring kind of... Um, You're getting into the details. Yeah. Yeah, put aside the details. Mm. <laughs> where, where would you say the problem is? Is there any? Well, um... Seems like the first line, second line, he asks Ito, what do you want to do? And then at the end, he's like, not dressed for the occasion at all. 
but it doesn't matter. I'm going to have a lot of fun. So it seems like there's this idea that other people are, oh, he's interested in what other people are doing and want to do, but you are thinking you're going to have a lot of fun in the future, but it's, but you're not concerned with what you're doing, or that uh, seems to be out of the picture. If you were to hold that in mind and reread it, do you think you could read it in such a way it would confirm what you just said? Well, I could try. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, holding what you just said. Okay. And going through the whole thing. Do you think there'd be evidence to support it? That's well, all. already it's changing yeah, yeah, okay. a little bit. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. Sort of. Porter. Barbara, you got anything? I haven't, I'm just getting oh, okay, the last okay, okay, okay. No. no, I haven't so far. Mm. <laughs> That's interesting. So, uh, like, in the, fourth par in the fourth paragraph, Eldar says he's a writer, and the guy he's talking with says you should be a food top guy. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> How is that an appropriate response to you being a writer? Well, it's not. It's it, not. And then he's laughing it. about it, and you're like, uh -huh. that's not funny. I mean, nobody's <laughs> laughing. Mm. I never liked that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really thick one. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, But I like that now you're really being yourself and fully enjoying talking to Robin. I like yeah, that line. Hmm. You stood up to Ryan. You know, I'm now in a good state of mind. I'm talking. What does that mean? I'm fully hmm. being myself. Yeah. Hey, Gina. Where? What do you think? Oh. <clears throat> Well, my first impression was uh, that he's going through several people that he is addressing and he is making decisions as to whether to be with them or not to be with them. And the last one looks like people yeah. that he's had problems with uh, and he's... Brad says he can't hear you. Oh. Uh, looks like he's going through several people he's had past experiences with and past situations and he is addressing them as he goes through the dream and in so doing he uh, recognizes in himself uh, that change in how he has addressed them in the past and how he's addressing them now and uh, he likes that state of mind um, that's what I see I don't see um, I mean, I see problems that you could look at, but I don't see a problem in the whole of the dream. Yeah, it looks like it's a success. Hmm. So I see it as overcoming a lot of, of, of negativity that he's experienced in the past. Hmm. Okay, uh, would it make any difference in your dream if I make a slight change? What is it? Oh, you want to hear the change? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I just thought I'd get away with just that much. Okay.
Look through that window. Oof. There's Barbara, <laughs> David, uh. Pierre, Regina, Brad. Then I start seeing everyone from the Noetic Society. <laughs> Yeah, what does that do? Uh, would that make any difference? Yeah. Why? Just another bunch of names. Well, it's a, it's a more... It's a, it's a more meaningful bunch of names. It, it would raise the the significance of this reunion. And let's assume everything that follows follows exactly according to this story with that slight change that I suggested. It would be really good. No. It is. Um, I, I, I do kind of feel that way. Like um, recently, um, I've been I've been uh, remembering a lot of the uh, a lot of my time from high school and a lot of. Uh, uh, you're in a rather awesome state of mind, according to this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, what's that like? It's really fun. It's really, really fun. It's like... Uh, it's exciting. It's playful. It's... Uh, I'm very curious and acting on my curiosity. Mm. Uh, it's I mean, you are scoring a victory in the way in which it re is recorded. I just made a slight change in one sentence. <laughs> what difference does that make? And not only that, but they're heading for a reunion with all of these people. Hmm. And you're in an awesome state of mind. And you know it's going to be fun. So it's... Um, what? So there's a, it's, it's, it's really exciting to see what's going to happen next. Hmm. Uh, Barbara, do you think it's fair for me to insert another set of names in this story? I, I do, actually. It's an inter interesting strategy. Yeah, why, why is that? Well, I'm interested by the fact that it didn't, I didn't hear, and maybe that's my hearing, Adre Eldar addressed the question of what would happen if you had that group of people, the Noetic Society, and then there's nothing else changed. Right? That's right. I didn't hear him address that. Well, well go think. ahead, go ahead. Well, it would, it would make it even more um, worthwhile and fun and meaningful for me to be there and uh, to, uh, in anticipation of, you know, catching up with everyone. Would anything else Come. have to change? What do you mean? Well, so you have Pierre saying, you should be food truck guy. Well, yeah, but that's not Pierre. Well, I mean, that's but what he asked you, you, though. But if you change the if group. If you change the group, what would happen to the, 
rest of the story in the a details. way. Details. I mean, and I thought you were saying, I mean, does anything change? <clears throat> Can like let's put Barbara in there. Barbara says you should be food talk guy. <laughs> well, Ingmar says you should be food talk good. guy. Well, Who does that fit with though? And everything uh, past would just be more amplified because. I amplified it. Did you hear how loud I was? It was very amplified. Because I consider that new group of people that he added in as more uh, more meaningful, a stronger group of people. That even to stand up to someone would be a bigger deal in this group than it would be in that group. Would the discourse change? Would the discourse change? Conversations in the dream. But wasn't the question uh, if everything stayed the same? What difference would mm -hmm. it Say, so, uh, what significance do you place on the fact that this is a reunion of all of your high school buddies? And now you can engage them all, and you're in an awesome state of mind as you confront them one way and the other, and you know it's going to be a great game when you do finally meet them in that rented hall. It's, it's like a, um, it's, it's, it, feels, it feels like I'm going back into the past. Yeah, that's true. And addressing... Uh, some things that I didn't address back then. So it, it has a, a great sense of uh, completion to it. Uh, kind of. You're bringing your present state of mind into the past. Yes. Right? Yes. And now with that point of view, you see the consequences of it, don't you? Yes. Right? How it, how it would have been different back then if yeah. I had been in this state yeah. of mind. Yeah. So it's it's a really uh, it's really good. Yeah, what did he said it was interesting. Did he he did. He did. I wonder what he. What do you mean by that? <coughs> it's a great word. Interesting. What are you saying now? Well, over the over the past uh, week or so, I kind of have um, felt like I'm back there. Back in high school, um, but in the good state of mind. So it's it's kind of like um, uh, it's like I'm it's like I'm doing what I always wanted to do with those people in the way that I wanted to. Uh. What do you conclude then about your dream? Uh, I think I, uh, I think I, I needed to see that I can be in a good state of mind while dealing with all sorts of problems and all sorts of people, good and bad, um, and that I can that I can just be that way. Uh, now that you can see you can be that way and gain a certain degree of success among that group, what do you think you need to do now? Hmm. Wow. See, it is a victory. I think I need to test it out. Oh, oh, oh. I just arbitrarily use that other set of names. Just coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you, here, you were going to add another set of names. You had another list that you were going to suggest. You already did. You have that list, Dave? I didn't hear it. No, Pierre said that he, he, he suggested a list of names of people here. But did he suggest, he said he had another suggestion about a list of names. I, no. I think he's saying maybe, yeah. he did, 
you, you said there was a second list of people that you were going to insert. I substituted another set of names for his high school buddies. Yeah, I don't, I don't, there's no second. And I believe, as I recall it, you were one of the names. Yeah, no, no, I heard that. And, good heavens. While you were talking with Barbara, yeah, you suggested yeah, that there would be a yeah. third list, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't hear that. You mean a third list? His list, Pierre's list. That's a third list, third. right? Yeah. No, I don't think third the list. third list would be relevant. Well, what if it was all his family members? Oh, maybe. What if it was all, like, Plato, Parmenides? Maybe you've already uh, done that one. Oh, now no, you guys are making it matter. All right. Somebody like that. <laughs> oh, Plato, Parmenides, I like it. To, um, <laughs> he had another list. Aha! Uh -huh. well, that's what I thought he was. Mm. Why did you uh, substitute those names? Why do you think? <laughs> I, I, you should ask why wouldn't he? <laughs> because here is a victory among your high school past buddies. And it's a good one. And you're showing that you could be in a very awesome state of mind. Yeah. Hmm. But the theme is high school buddies. Small pond, big frog. Small pond, big frog. So what? Well, you tell me, yeah, so yeah, what? Yeah, you, you know. is, is that sufficient for you? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, no. Oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> he said no. He said no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm greedy. I'm greedy like that. All right. In a good way. Uh, just and also, there's like the choice of activities, right? Like, in the beginning, there's swimming pool, right? And then the second to last paragraph, it's uh, the thing that you're sharing with the guys—a memory about uh, Robin getting wasted, right? Swimming pool, getting wasted, and then with Robin. You have a great conversation in the third to the last one. So there's no content. No content. You had a great conversation about what? That doesn't seem to be the focus. Uh, well... Yeah, I'm drawing the focus here. Uh, the, what we talked about was like... Robin is actually not part of my high school. He's actually part of my school in that I went to in Germany. But in the dream, he was part of the high school. So um, he's, he's kind of a special one. So we were like um, reconnecting. Uh, <coughs> the, the way that we did a long time ago in, in Germany, many years ago. Um, OK. So what kind of a connection was it? Yeah, the content of it was like, so good to see you, hey. Uh, it was like a. It's like recognizing the, um, I don't know, like the spark that we had between us uh, back then. Can you talk more about that? About the spark? Mm, and it, well, it sounds like it's a level shift at the very end uh, that Ingmar is drawing your attention to. Was that relationship, how does that relate to a high school experience? The rela the relationship in Germany at that school, how does that relate to the high school? What's the distance or something? Well, it's in, the, in that line uh, of... Um, when, I, when I'm reflecting and I say that I wouldn't have um, talked to him like that before because he, he wasn't one of the cool kids. Mm -hmm. um, That's what it was like back then. Even though we had a good connection, I wouldn't really talk to him that much because he wasn't one of the popular kids. Um, but he and the dream, I'm like, just forget about all that. That's nonsense. And I'm just connecting with him authentically. And it actually made me remember that I had a great friendship with this guy. And I, I, Trying to get in touch with him on Facebook. 
I'm just well, the reason why I brought it up is because like again we could play with the difference right we could substitute the other group let's say you're having a great conversation with a member of that other group well what if you were to add content too because it's absent right I mean talking about how you wouldn't talk to them in the past and how you are now is still not revealing what you talked about like what what justifies the use of the adjective great or having a great time with each other. It's the state of mind that I'm in when I'm talking to. Would it be... What difference would it make if it was the other group then? Well, I, hopefully I would be in the same state of mind. Hopefully you'd be in the same state of mind, but, but then, then there wouldn't be any difference. What did it take for you to actually <clears throat> see this genuine connection that you have with Robin? Like, I don't know about the whole who you're talking to and all that stuff, but in terms of like the, the dynamics of the dream, what happened right before you talked to Robin? What would you call that? What was it that made me see the genuine connection? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, I always saw the connection, but now I had given myself permission to, to openly express it. Whereas before I was kind of like, putting it aside because of this, the way I thought I should behave. You had to do something though, in the, in the dream you had to do something. Well, I, I, um, I stood up to the guy in... Mm. Well, actually, that's funny. I stood up to one of the popular kids. Oh, mm. oh what is that? Uh -huh. What does that mean? Uh -huh. uh, well, it, it's, uh, it's something I should have done a long time ago. <laughs> because the popular kids are popular... Mm. Well, this guy is mean. Mean. There are nice popular kids, but he's a mean. A mean popular kid. Yeah. Oh. In the past, when he tells you this joke, you know, you should be the food top guy. Yes, I wouldn't have uh, done what I did. Yeah. And you would have walked away in a bad state of mind and yeah. missed this connection you have. But That's what the words say. Well, I, the connection I had with Robin. With, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I never had a connection with. Right, so, but you stand up to him. Like, so, I'm wondering about the significance of that. Like, what that means in terms of what you're seeing now versus you're seeing then. Because this seems to be a going back to the old days. And, and, like, what does that mean in terms of what you see now? It's, it's huge, because I see that the, the, the power is in speaking my mind rather than uh, shying away like my strategy used to be to um, I'll just avoid conflict mm -hmm. but um, this this is a meaningful conflict right and it, it shows that um, that that's good to do <laughs> <laughs> And then with that, the, with that ability to put words on what you see, even if it has a conflict, at the same time, that allows you to have this real connection with Robin? Well, it, it was like a kind of a catalyst. Like, I, I, for me to stand up to him, I had to be in a certain state of mind. So then I, I did. It felt good. I mean, it was good. And then I remained in that state of mind because I kept my... Integrity and, and what, up to you, what do you call that state of mind? Awesome. <laughs> What'd you call it? Awesome. In the awesome. dream, I call it awesome. Well, so, so could you uh, tell us how that relates to your dream of last night? Hmm. Is there some continuity going on in your dream world? state of mind in last night's dream, uh, I cut off 
because I didn't have anything to hold on to. That was my false reasoning. Uh, Are you working, therefore, on a similar theme? Yeah. What do you make of that, if that's true? The similarity that I can see is the, uh, the continuation of the state of mind, rather than cutting it off. Do you see some other... No, yours. <coughs> uh, just for those uh, who might need a review, what conclusion did you walk away with last night after the dream review that we had? Uh, it was the... It's okay, it's okay not to know. I can't hear you with a... I said that it's it's okay not to know what's going to happen, um, and I don't need to have something to hold on to. Uh, uh, that I can just enjoy that. Open uh. That idea that you have to have something to hold on to pulled you out of a higher state, did it not? Yeah. Uh, what's pulling you out of a higher state in this dream? Nothing. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful question. You thought you, you knew. You are, no. you, the dream is centered upon your dealing with, in a nice level, with your high school comrades. Is that something you can hold on to? Hmm. The, the state? Yeah, that. Yeah. Range. Comfortable way of relating with those kinds of people? Um, well, I don't know if it's comfortable. Well, I mean, take a look at the dream. What's it saying? How are you relating among the high school friends in the dream? Well, I'm doing very well. You're doing well. You're asking, is this... Uh, by the way, would it make any difference with that slight change of the names of the people? What do you mean? Well, what do you mean? What's the same question. <laughs> Instead of relating to high school buddies, would it make any difference? It was the Noetic Society people. Yeah, it would be more challenging. Oh... Oh. In which group do you think that sense of holding on is playing itself out? In the high school. I see, I see. I see. <laughs> Although... Uh... Hmm, that's rather curious, isn't it? The conclusion of the last night's dream is now showing you something else about the very fact. Well, I'm, I'm saying I'm more likely to hold on to something in the high school group. But are you pointing to something in the dream? Hmm. That I'm holding on to? By the way, let me ask the question again. Okay. In which group would you say that that apparent need, apparent need, to be able to hold on to something. Remember, when that came in, that was a way of explaining why you left that free, open mind state, which you regarded quite highly, 
that you felt you couldn't stay there because there was nothing there to hold on to. So keeping that image of the need to hold on to, did you find that among the high school people there was a comfortable way of being able to maintain that sense of holding on to things that you're familiar with and doing well and exceptional well? <laughs> what do you see? Well, yeah. Mm. But it's, it, mm. it is, a, it is a, a, another level of holding on, though. Yes, yes, yeah, quite true, quite yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what level? It's a higher level of holding on. Ah. Yes. You're talking about that last level. It's paragraph? holding on, nevertheless. In what respect? What, what's a higher level? You say it's a higher level. Mm. Well, last night's dream was uh, I jumped off a couch to mm. because I wanted mm. to hold on to um, I needed something to hold on to because I was playing this video game with a girl that I like. Say, so, um, are you part of this curious group that meets around here in the mornings? Yes. Uh, what would you have to do to get into it? <laughs> uh, let go of what I'm holding on to. Oh, oh. <laughs> Is that risking being in that state where there's nothing to hold on to? Yeah. I see, I see. What are you holding on to in the dream? Hold on. So, uh, Ella, you seem to be comparing from like the third to the last paragraph. It's up above you, but you're comparing and looking at the way your state of mind is now as opposed to where it was in the past. And you're saying, wow, it's so much better. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if that same difference between the past and the present could be expressed in that one phrase, the difference between being a food top guy and being a writer. Yeah, yeah it could. <laughs> It seems like it's kind of right there in that in that one image. Yeah, he wants me to be a food guy. If, if those guys see you as a food top guy yeah. in that in that in that context of their world. Yeah. And you're saying, dude, I'm a writer, which is quite different. There's kind of an exponential difference there. Yeah, that's it's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, in, in, in the dream yesterday, by the way, there were more wows in one paragraph than I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. So it was like he was in a really fine state, but he has to let go of it to um, um, to have something to hold on to. And here he's also in that really fine state in the end. He's having a great deal of fun, and it doesn't even matter that he doesn't isn't dressed properly here. So there's a little bit of growth. Maybe. You, know, oh. you would have to see that for yourself. I just I just thought it was interesting that the juxtaposition of writer and food top guy pretty much consolidates the comparison between the past and the present. Hey, Eldar, I was wondering, are you, are you comfortable with what Pierre has been reflecting on you with with respect to the idea? Oh, comfortable. I introduced it with comfortable. He's talking about you being comfortable with something in there and then making a connection with the idea that came out of last night's dream exploration of holding on to something. Are you clear that yeah. that, that could be, oh, how so? I was just curious to know. And just in terms of, you know, being a student of dream analysis, What's the people question? that are, well, what are, what are you comfortable with in this dream that you're holding on to that's blocking you from being into a higher state? Well, even though this is a... Uh, is that a good question, Peter? I don't know if he's, go ahead. Well, even though this is a... a, a um. Excuse me, I was reflecting on something. Um, I remember many years ago that uh, I was talking to this very bright girl and uh, really into ideas on a very nice, profound level. So I said, um, uh, <clears throat> where do you live? 
And she says, well, I'm just visiting here. I, 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 where do, 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 do you live? And she said, oh, I, I live upstate in a rather small town. I said, what's it like with your kind of mind living in a small town in upstate New York? And she said, you know, she said, we moved there because we knew it would be better to be a big fish in a small pond than to have the same fish swimming in the ocean with all of its dangers. What do you think of that? It's a very nice story. What? It's a very nice story. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I'm thinking about it. Do, do you? <laughs> Curious. See, it's just uh, 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 cur cur think there's some reason for that. Yeah. What? Coincidence? Coinky dinkle? No. Coinky dinkle. Uh, logos, <laughs> logos a dental or something. <laughs> and a lot, and a lot, and a logical. Yeah, it's it's the. It's the comparison between the high school and the noetic society. Yeah. <laughs> Is that fair to do to the dream, though? Why not? Yeah. He called it fair. He I've saw never it. heard of an opportunity to change the logos of the dream and say, what if the logos were different? Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't seem to me like that's honoring the dream master. Mm -hmm. Like, I yeah. like the comparison. I like what it does, but it seems to take the the force of the discussion away from whatever the dream is focusing mm. on. You think this is a straightforward success then? I didn't call success or failure. Because I'm still puzzled about the meaning of it. Like he already recognizes that he can be in an awesome state of mind. Mm -hmm. I think the dream contains right. something he had to do to get So that. now what are you going to do with it, you see? Well, that's what I'm looking forward to the yeah. next dream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But, yeah. Okay. but, no, but, but even, if, <laughs> like, even if he had to do something to get into a better state of mind, isn't it, is, it's not legitimate to ask about the audience? Oh, thank about you. About who he's thank you. relating thank you. with in the dream? Or, or for that matter, what they're, get, what, no, what they're, what they're sharing. No, I think that's I think we want to know what that means in terms of who those are more. We want to get into the, those characters and what does it mean he had to go back to this old state of mind in high school and he didn't function in the same way. If he had functioned in the same way, he would he would have been in a bad mm. state, according to his own rules, according to the own wor words. So now that he is functioning in a different way, that seems to be something. Good. Sure, sure, sure. I'm I'm all for it. But again, isn't it curious that the dream master is picking a particular group of people and did not pick the noetic society when the noetic society is a group of peers for him, right? Like, like the high school. If, like, you could imagine a dream picking the Noetic Society to feature in his dream. Wouldn't They're you not his peers, though. We are not his peers. Well, I said a different set of Because he can't peers. come out. He can't come out yet. And that's why he articulated that it would be very challenging for him to, to be in this awesome state of mind in the Noetic Society. Okay. He articulated that. I think it's very interesting, but it just takes away from the focus that the Dream Master chose the high school people. Mm. Specifically, it specifically chose two different types of high school relationships to focus on. Sure. I just think that Pierre, Pierre's direction puts mm. that those distinctions into relief, actually. Like, I, I don't think that we're going away from the dream by, by asking that. We're raising that other group. Would per se, the, per se. Would the relationship with Ryan in the gymnasium, is it? What's his name? Robin in the gymnasium? That's the German school, is that right? Oh, okay. no, thank you. Would, did, can you talk about it all, the qualities of the gymnasium? What is it? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, is it his... Yeah, you talk... Oh, uh, it's... That's how you say high school in German. Oh, so you're still in high school. Wow. What's the comparison between that? Well, I guess I want to know, too, um, could Robin come to the Nordic Society? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
hypothetically. I think out of all the people in the room, he would be most uh, most likely. likely. Yeah. Most likely. He's really cool. And I just, because of this dream, I remembered him. And I was like, oh, yeah, that guy was awesome. I wish I'd spent more time with him. But I think also that from given what was described last night about the dream, are you, how would you say this dream then addresses what insight you came to? Which I think was what Pierre was asking. Yeah, I think you've seen. Well, yeah, I'm it, glad it, you went back. It, it takes it. It takes it uh, further to a. Uh, um, there was a level of holding on in that dream, which is also present here, but here it's uh, a, a higher kind of holding on. Here it's the holding on to the way that I'm relating to everyone in the dream. Even though it's a good state of mind, I'm not. It, it's it's not really challenging me to any great extent. It's, I'm comfortable. I mean, I can do this. I can do this. Or you can see you can do that this now. Or yes. Yeah. So uh, it, it it takes um, it takes that problem that I had in la last night's dream and shows it in a greater scope. Yeah, so cool. This, this dream. Yeah. So it would be good to consider then what greater scope is possible beyond that, yes. now that you can see that. Yes. And maybe that could answer. And that's what, the, yeah. that's what the Nordic Society takes on. <clears throat> So, you're, so to answer the question, what's the relationship between the two dreams, you're seeing what? Uh, like a, a progress. Yeah. So we expect you to be a writer, and you'll have to participate like you did here. Did this dream come after in time? Yes, the one you came, explored last night? It came one day after. Oh, okay. Say, <clears throat> is it possible that you and I have the same uh, curiosity about things? Sure. Oh, good, good. So if I mention that I'm curious about something, is it likely you might find the same thing curious? It's very likely. Ah, good. Sure, good. I'm curious about why Barbara is having that book so closely to, to herself, and maybe there's something in it she wants to talk about. No. It has a beautiful picture. Oh, that's true. This, this is the picture some of you guys have seen. Oh. It's supposed to be the. It's supposed to be a reconstruction of Athena, uh, of the statue of Athena by Phidias in the Parthenon. And it was done originally with ivory for the skin and gold, solid gold for the dressings. And it was like more than 40 feet high. So beautiful. Yeah. I, I think uh, do you think there might be Guns something in that book that she'd like to talk about? Well, she's no. been guarding it like it's No, well, actually, actually, she's been trying to disguise her very large belly because she's afraid that camera <laughs> is like focused right on Pierre. And that means... There I am, in largeness. <laughs> but, <clears throat> in all your glory. I brought it with me in greater glory. Yeah, I brought it with me actually, so I could um, write in uh, in the pages if there was something good to write on. This is the Parmenides notebook. I don't Time necessarily is. know if there's Time anything. Is. No, Timaeus isn't in here. Okay, That's go it, ahead. That notebook in the car. Oh, what's your <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, actually. Well, I want to, can I just, I, my nephew, I have a nephew, okay, and the thing you need to know about this nephew is, like, he is the brightest person in my family, by far. He is so bright. So, he's going to choose a college. Now he's finished the college, by the way. And he says to me on the phone, I'm going to go to Whittier. And he I'm going to go to Whittier College. Now, Whittier College is a private, small college, long history. He had the choices of places like... <coughs> Yale, 
Harvard, Berkeley. Wow. He was accepted to many fine institutions. So I said, why are you going to Whittier? He said, because at those other schools, everybody there is as bright as I am. As, as bright as I am. And at Whittier, he can star. You know, it's a nice level, but it's not like those other schools. What so reason? he wanted a school where he wasn't challenged. And similar to your story. Yeah, yeah. But it was just, and I, <laughs> I, I just looked at that choice and I thought, how sad yeah. that the pack of logos had him that tight. His family just put him down unmercifully. I kept trying to, his mother, my sister, and his father just kept saying, kept making his intelligence a thing to criticize in him from the day he was born, just about. I saw it, and I tried to work against it, but I couldn't get any leverage. Except I did tell him, I straight to his face, he and his brother, that that his parents were suffering from a worldview and a self-view, and they were imposing it on him for what they thought was his greater good, but it wasn't, <laughs> you know? And that once they got out of that constriction, he could do what he liked. And the only problem is, what he likes right now is apparently live action role play. So he does Renaissance Fair and a lot, a lot, a lot. Of nothing bad, but nothing profound. So you're saying he's bright, he knows he's bright, but not intelligent. No, I didn't say that. Um, Can you make that distinction? See, it, it rests upon a, an illusion. Mm. It is not true that people who go to those schools. Ah. Are have the image that is being suggested in your story. Oh, interesting. You mean it is not true that that's where true hey, intelligence is? some of the dullest people in the world Bush. go to Yale, Bush. Princeton, Harvard. Yeah. yeah, all those big schools. <laughs> Dull. And, and they never get into the ideas. Mm. And they're there because they know they're going to graduate automatically. They're called gentlemanly C students. Ah. C. <laughs> C grade. Oh, C. Right. C's get degrees. And, and it is not true in the slightest that they are singling out and attract the best brains. Well. They, in principle, they don't want them. Right. right. And the only way some people who are bright can get in there is through some particular professor's interest in them, hmm. not the registration department. Really? That's damn right. Well, see, and I, it, I'm really glad you're pointing that out, but what I felt was sad was he was choosing simply a non-competitive no, school. That's, 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 you know, rather, he, he's working he, on a myth. Yeah, as well, yeah. Ooh, too bad, he might have, you mean he might have shown even in that context, if he could have... See, uh, equally well, it's absurd to think that the school is the center of intellectual life. Right. It's the particular professor mm. that's so, going to be the bright one that you want to link mm. with. So he should, could have looked for the professor of right. his... Because some schools have a great reputation because of Professor X, Y, and Z who no longer are teaching there. Ah. So you have to make sure you're, you're really with the center of your own interest and that interest should show itself in the brilliance of some particular professor can help you along the way, That'd wherever be nice. they are. Yeah, 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 I get you. That's so true. Yeah, that I would have liked, yeah. I, maybe I should have gone Yeah, my professor asking. stopped teaching at Golden West College, so I can't hey, man, that's just true. <laughs> Like, would you agree there may be some people who are interested in Plato? What yes. school would you recommend them? Oh, God, I don't know if there are any. You said there might be a, some people of limited range at Trinity in Ireland. Yeah. Trinity. Mm. And that's the only one Pierre knows of in his long, somewhat long history <laughs> of Platonic studies. But right, but if someone would have to search, someone had to do a little homework, wouldn't they? Sure. So when people ask me, I always have a good answer. I get off your ass and take a look. <laughs> Go visit. Yeah. 
Sit in the class. Mm. Sit in the class because you're going to be sitting in a class with the professor. And that's mm. going to be your intellectual life. Mm. Yeah, that. You want to make sure he's still with it, and the direction he's going. And before you go, look at all the readings required for each of the particular professors that you think you might want to be studying with. Oh man. And see what they're into. Wow, well, that would have been such good advice. Screw me, I didn't do it. Otherwise, you're wasting your money and your time on absurdities. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and especially that part about watch the professor in action, and then maybe talk with the professor as well. See what he's like, right? As well as look yeah. at what he's doing and what books he's having you study. That wow, I should have. I mm -hmm. only would have thought I was just so appalled. He went to the campuses. I don't. I think he okay. talked to the professor, but he did go to a campuses, I think, where they were they had the reputation for his field. What's his field? Um, he's into computers, but that isn't what he graduated in. I'd have to think back. I, right now, I cannot remember what it is. It was, uh, but it was in the sciences, I think. So. Oh. Uh -huh. Probably social science. Well, like my other nephew, he's choosing something because he thinks he can find a job in it. He is an extremely fine cellist. You know, he's at high school, he's in two years into high school. He's, he got to skate, state level in terms of competitions, but he, he admitted that he hadn't really worked for the competition at state level, so he didn't place, right? And he says, oh, I don't want to be a cellist because I can't possibly get in. You know, it's too crowded of a field. And, uh, but his grandfather was double mm -hmm. PhD in physics and music. So I said, could you go that way? Could you? So he's doing engineering, he wants to do engineering. He's thinking, because engineering, you can get a job. He's thinking. So, I don't know. No. And my other nephew, he- That's a third nephew? That's a grand nephew. The grand nephew is the one I just talked about. Great nephew, whatever they are. So, um, but my, my, sis, my sister's child, he, his master's program was created for the sake of a company that wanted him to do a specific sure. thing so that he could get a job, yeah. so that when he graduated, he walked into, at the time, it was a very good salary, $50,000 a year, just first job out of the door, and that was 15 years ago, so he's doing very, very well, and, but what he got the job for was so he could hunt and fish. Hmm. Anything wrong with that? No. But as a goal in life? Eh. As his free time? Yes. Like work, make your yeah. money. Yeah, work, make your money, go, go hunt and fish. On Thanksgiving. <laughs> right? Uh, hmm. Should he anyway. That? Scope. It's a scope thing. No, I don't really have anything about the Timaeus at the, as of this moment. Hmm. Um, he is I and you. He is, but it's. It, I told him it's the wrong book. It's fun. It's not the. Um, well, you've been in the Timaeus. Timaeus. He's curious. Yeah. Well, I was looking. The Timaeus, I have to say, this is um, a kind of. It was interesting to me because I once did a search for the Logos and once for Phronesis in the Republic, right? And I looked at every single quote for the Logos or Phronesis. And I typed next to every single entry, which was hundreds. I typed the passage, okay? I think that's right. So, um, and it's, you know, I, uh, it was still puzzling at the end of all that. But the interesting thing about the Timaeus, I did some searches because of the quote, Pierre kind of ended his formal explor exploration of it. There were four videos, I think. And in the last video, he suggested the passage at 90E, was it? No. And it's about uh, correcting the, ser the revolutions in your soul that are corrupted at birth by giving that part of the soul, which is the highest part of the soul, the most divine part of the thing, by giving it the proper nurture. And the proper nurture is um, the harmonies and revolutions of the divine. So it sets up an analogy. I think that's correct. It sets up an analogy mm -hmm. with um, the creation of the cosmos. So that you have to then look at the at the um, quotes that have. Oh, so I looked at all the quotes. I haven't looked at all of them, but because I'm studying in a little different way, which I find. But but what's interesting about the Timaeus is you start looking at those quotes, and they all hang together. 
in a very tight <laughs> structure. And it's like, you're going, whoa, whoa, I had that question, and wow, 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 you know? It, like, it does this beautiful structural thing. It, um, and, but it leads to other questions, like, um, oh, it was also divine thoughts. And thoughts in the that are a nurture to the to that part of the soul, and um, and it fits perfectly with the structure of the soul, perfect kind of perfectly structure of the soul in the Republic, the three parts of the soul, and and so but the word for thoughts is dionoesis, and you just when you do these, it's like you're un, you're opening up these little I don't know how to like little sets of jewels, like the crown jewels in a way. You open them up. There's another beautifully articulated piece of shining elements pulled together mm. it's like so much fun to do and sometimes and so but I've been I've been like focusing on I'll like get into a good section and then I'll realize a higher question is like well what about um, no ace mind in the Timaeus mm -hmm. because of one particular mm -hmm. quote so it's not I'm really just talking to you right now about how I was pursuing the study of it and so, of course, one has to, in the, in the pursuit of something so beautiful, one has to allow oneself the cooling off period. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's a... So you went from... No, wait, wait. Oh. That's, that's meaning I, I fought, I, um, yesterday I was talking to Pierre about my path of logos, because I was amazed. I was just friggin' amazed. I spent a whole day, and in my mind was this stream, the whole day. So I'm looking at this stream... And it's like, oh, there's this beautiful thing I could I could do. And but I don't do it the whole freaking day. Now ask me if I've ever been in that state of mind a whole day and had something happen like never. Never. So what am I doing? Reading trash. I mean literally like junky things. And um so we were talking about it and there's this whole past scene where I'm sitting standing in front of my father waiting for him to recognize my existence. Because my father had five kids, and he just kind of went, come on, guys! And everybody would just go, da -da 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 -da, you know, as a group. And so I wanted my dad to see me and recognize me. And he didn't. He would not look up. And my, I remember later, my mother was in the corner, his mother was watching this. And my dad had his eyes down, right? And this little smirk on his face. And it was like, he never recognized my existence until he was in the hospital dying and he saw me walking down the hallway because he was outside his door for a while and he said he called me by name first time I remember him ever calling my name I was 35 years old so so the thing is I was doing the same thing for the object of my love mm -hmm. that he did with me not recognizing its existence not engaging it and <clears throat> so that was very helpful and mm -hmm. it will permit me to challenge my pack of logos yeah. cool. not a right. not a bad thing to do you know we have nothing <laughs> else to do you know yeah. you gotta, gotta look at yourself and, yeah. Uh, yeah it's often helpful yeah <laughs> so it was pretty crazy <laughs> i finally did it by the way like the last hour of the day I spent on it. And it was, in fact, very beautiful and very easy. But I spent the whole day going, wow. And then, like, at one point, I, like, pulled the book over to me, like, and it's here, and I'm doing this other thing, which is junkie reading on my computer, Kindle, and then I'm like, oh. you know, like that. It was just bizarre. I felt it was bizarre. But then it was explained the next day. I'm not sure if I gave you a full account in the midwifery, but enough so you have the gist of it, I think. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good recollection. Yeah. Mm. And at the same time, it still goes into correcting the, the motions of your soul. Oh, that's like, the most gets, fascinating part. It gets back right into the top that, mm -hmm. of the ideas that you're exploring. You know, well, like that, that's it. There's two, only two motions that are in the soul in the soul of the cosmos, right? And what, so, and they're described as they're translated as motion of the same and motion of the other. But the word for motion of the same, that's the word you may have remember from your studies, is the same word for self, right? So, and there's a passage in the, in the Timaeus that talks about how you come to recognize um, think, 
how you come to know versus how you come to understand, mm. I believe, is the way it's put. And if something is akin, I'm going to use that word. Anyway, there's some beautiful passages about coming, and like it's like when it encounters something that is not like, it causes a disruption. And it, it brings in a different faculty to judge it, and that's how right opinion comes about. But it's very, it's very interesting. So I recommend getting into it. You could, I don't think those videos have been posted yet uh, on the Timaeus, but they're good videos. Well, it what, sounds what like videos? a rich discussion between your own personal reflection and then also introducing the midwifery into the Timaeus, seeing the progression through the different and cognitive Usia, functions. See, there's definitely this motion of the soul in it. Yes, there is a progression through the cognitive functions. Quite right. And I started by saying, Ingmar, that... that um, what did you just ask me? No, videos. What that, videos? That, in fact, Pierre gave a t four talks on the Timaeus. And in the last talk, he left us with this quote. I believe it was the last talk. on At 90C or 90D, mm. something like that. Which talks about correcting... Uh, the. Revolution. It's so fascinating, because it's just like the, the Republic, which talks about, you know... The, how the soul is, um, you know, how the devolution of the kinds of souls from the aristocratic to the, finally to the tyrannic, and it's through the logos, but it isn't, I don't think it's at, it's not at birth, but it's through the logos, mm -hmm. although you have to choose a life too, so that has a bearing, but, um, so yeah, there are, there were four lectures Pierre gave her talks, dialogues that he gave, and uh, on the time ends, relatively recently. Do you know the dates, Yanni? No, but that's, I mean, now that you're mentioning it, I'm remembering that, yeah. that you just explained to me. So that's one reason why we were going to, we were doing the time is that you walked in on that, the time before the... I know we've been doing the time is recently. Mm, that's why. And Julie had a really great quote on her phone. I don't know if she still does. I do somewhere. Well, ah. somewhere. She typed in the question about analogies oh. and because it's all based around analogies right analogies and something. and the um, understanding the cycles is it of the cosmos so you gave us a question and Julie I don't did you type it into your phone at yes. that time so then yeah, hold on to it. it yeah, yeah she pulled it up so yeah you got it? <laughs> <laughs> got it with you? Well, I don't know. Let me check. Take a look. I might have cleared this baby out a few times. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, I think it's on. It's supposed to be on. You got it from the video? Or you got it from the class? So it should be there as well. So that's why I don't have much of the time at my fingertips. Ah. It's because of the fact that I my catalogo let me move away from it. The Timaeus does not exist. <laughs> As a pack of logos, too, it was just, I mean, can you imagine walk, walking in? I'd taken Pierre a bunch of those things he says, you know, where he says, write down the words, you know. But, and we had talks about those, the voices, the logos that are blocking you from proceeding at your best with and then this is like, there really isn't a Logos. There's just kind of, it was this beauty. And me sitting there going, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, no, okay, let me go go for it. No greed, right? For the good things. I don't but, think I can. But you can see it. You bump into it, yeah? No, yeah, but it's just kind of gone like into the world of computer space. It was a sense that this would be beautiful to to immerse myself in, release into. Okay. I don't. That's my own language, but I couldn't couldn't uh, engage mm -hmm. it. I could. I just kept having this sense that there was this beauty, and I was like sitting there going, mm hmm, mm hmm, <laughs> not doing anything. Do you think that's the same state that your dad was in? Uh huh. I do. Good question. Both ways. I, I, th I saw my dad as just beautiful, you know. Mm, no? No, it's not here. Gone. Yeah. Right. Back in the text. Okay. Thank I'm off. Thank oh, you, guys. So what about your turmoil? Are you 
Are you going to blow away with this turmoil? Is it spinning out of control? It could happen. Uh-oh. Hold on. I am. I'm Hold on, thou fairish moment. That's uh, Goethe's theme, you know. Mm. No. In Faust. Didn't, in, know. Uh, not huh? Faust. Didn't know that. Faust. Oh, yeah. Hold on to the fairish no one, No one read. Very, I, I've never... Be only because of the kinds of people I know. Uh, they don't like Germans? Yeah. No, but they, uh, I, in all my like interest like in ideas, uh, one is Faust, Goethe's Faust. And uh, I never met anybody who hmm. can talk about part two of Goethe's Faust. Mm. All they know is the first part. Mm. Which is... Ah, eh? What is, what is, what is part two? Well, it's a magnificent uh, conclusion mm. to the challenge of Mephistopheles. Mm. And Faust, Habenunach uh, philosophy. Uh, I have studied philosophy, theology. Uh, that's where he starts, mm -hmm. and he goes into a drug experience mm. <laughs> in order to see if he can invoke the gods or the divine. He's the first person in European history who played with psychedelic drugs, which is quite commendable. Mm. And so he has a vision of Mephistopheles. Mm. And Mephistopheles mm. says, hey, I'll make a deal with you. Yeah. The first drug deal. I'll give you eternal life as long as you follow me. Mm. And Faust says, what the hell could you do? So what? Hmm. You see, Faust says, do you think there's anything in this everyday world that is so significant that I'd be willing to say, that's true? You can't give me anything in the nature of this everyday reality that has anything significant. Hmm. So Mephistopheles says, I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. I'll give you the kind of power and position that you'll be able to experience everything. And I'll bet you'll find one of those events mm. where you'll say, that's it, I'll hold on to it. Mm -hmm. mm. So if he does, then he, then, he, then Mephistopheles has won, right? Yeah. So, so at the end of part two, okay. Faust now is a political leader hmm. and he's designing a perfect state. And the perfect state is just like Holland. Hmm. It has a dike? Lots of dikes. Hmm. And therefore the people in his ideal state have to always be in fear of the collapse of the dike. Mm. And that will keep them alert and alive mm. and in meaningful quest to always repairing and worrying about the possible collapse. Hmm. Okay. So he built it. Yes. And at that moment he said, Hold thou fairest moment. Whoa. Hmm. Of course, Mephistopheles won. Yeah. But then the angels come down from heaven and say, hey, we agree. That's the most important thing in the <laughs> nature of man. Wow. Like so you lose. Spoiler oh, alert. interesting. Spoiler alert. And that whole drama is played out in part two of Faust. Hmm. Hmm, the angels now, win. <laughs> hmm. 
So hold thou fairest moment is the key phrase. And the angels say you lose? No. You lose to Mephistopheles. Oh, Mephistopheles. No, 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 no. Oh, it's so an ideal state. Do you agree with that assessment that that's the most beautiful moment? And that's the most oh, beautiful I th thing? Oh, I think it's Germanic. Ah. It's Germanic. More Germanic bullshit. <laughs> Hmm. What do you see as its value than the story? For, for Europeans? For, yeah. They love that. Hmm. Oh, yeah. What about for anybody? The end of it? Anybody. Mankind. People. Hey, people flock to Holland. True. That's the great, you know, that's the one city, state, or Amsterdam. Uh, that's free. You can do anything you want. Wow. Right? Prostitution is legal, grass is free, mouth of are free, everything is free. Yeah. Hmm. Looking for that great moment. Does, does Perfect that... freedom. And they live under the fear of the collapse of the dikes. So that keeps them awake all the time, see? <laughs> and that's it. That's the goal. <laughs> because being awake is in its is good in it for its own sake eternal vigilance that's the way to live hmm. under the fear of annihilation wow yeah that's us too so if you ask me what I think of it it's the wall that holds back the it's sea bullshit. the wall that holds back the sea <laughs> it's, Cause, it's, it's Papa Hegel again because it's below hmm. sea level because all is flat and it goes against his dream. Scratch your German skin and you get Hegel and Faust. Mm. <laughs> well, it would go against his dream, too. Pardon? It so would go against wall, his dream. It risks mm. You hold on, not out of fear, or you have those experiences, but not out of fear. Mm. He didn't fear. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you Pierre. Pleasure. Thank you. Charge! Charge. We'll go looking for that fairest moment. <laughs> Tomorrow morning at seven. He says he's saying Parmenides tomorrow might be the fairest moment. No. 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 <laughs> oh, that's true. Right now. Besides, Thank you, guys. Fairest might not be Thank fairest. you. Thank you, Pierre. Oh. Thank you. So can I have a talk with you sometime? Are you in town for a few days or? Right now. Right now, okay. Blah, cool. blah, blah, blah. Wonderful. Okay. Thank uh, thank dear, you, uh, dear, thank you, Pierre. I'll be back to get my stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Pleasure. Pleasure.